And number seven, everyone was hustling to make lots of money without thinking or caring about who was left holding the bag when the music stopped. If I recall correctly, it's been a long time since I've been in school. Greed is one of the seven deadly sins, a fact that is no, well, no doubt well known around this campus. Today, the Shore Bank Rescue Loan Program is reaching out to an estimated 10,000 households on the west and south sides of Chicago. To people who have mortgages with interest rates that will adjust significantly upwards between now and the end of next year. Most amazingly, 80% of the people who we are interviewing for loans under this program, these are the people who have these very high rate, adjustable rate mortgages, 80% of the applicants have qualified for conventional loans. Reinforcing the fact that the hard sell promotion of these high price mortgages was indefensible if the point is providing your customer with the most suitable product on the market. Now, isn't that a quaint thought, to think about providing your customer with something that's suitable? Shore Bank today is making about a loan a day, but hopes to be making three loans a day by year end. With it, all banks in the country would do the same and fulfill their obligations under the Community Reinvestment Act to, quote, be the credit needs of their communities. So as you can see, banking and ethics should be, could be, and I like to believe used to be, joined at the hip for the greater good of the nation, rather than be disconnected, unvalued, underregulated, thus permitting the selfish and the powerful to fill their inflated walls as they exploit those of lesser means. If ever we hope to build a fair, just, and equitably productive nation, we must abandon personal greed as a dominant value of the society and begin to behave as if we truly are each other's keepers and not each other's exploiters. And so now, Mary, if you want to come and say a couple of words about how ethical behavior is central to the fulfilled life, it's all yours. No, I just want to say that we could take a few questions if there's a few minutes. And uh, uh, the story is really a story about what an interesting profession development banking is and will be for decades and decades to come. That's it, Ryan. Uh, if you'd use the microphone, that way we can get it on tape. Who will be first? Uh, when you initially started uh, with the purchase of the bank several decades ago, how, for, how long were you making losses on the loan? How long did it take you to turn positive on profits? I think it was essentially in the first year. We, because we bought an existing bank, uh, which had been profitable before it was acquired, the first year was very was almost break even. But after that, we always made a profit. The first year, we sold a uh, uh, we had a, a large uh, portfolio of tax exempt mortgages. Uh, we deliberately sold those because we realized there was no way we were going to be able to utilize the tax advantage. Uh, and that year was an outbreak. That was a loss year. Now, if you'd asked uh, how many years before we made as much money as our peers, <laughs> that would have been a harder question. <laughs> and the other lesson that we learned is that, uh, uh, I think the other uh, lesson that we learned, uh, I sometimes like to think that we were smarter when we were younger. Uh, because when we were invited by Governor Clinton to go to Arkansas and create a rural development bank, and then in Cleveland and Detroit, there were, uh, uh, in, in Arkansas, we were able to purchase a bank. In Cleveland and Detroit on the West Coast, we had to start new banks. Uh, and so those were much more difficult startups and took quite a few years before those banks became profitable. Thank you.
Uh, Ron, the, uh, the result uh, of this unethical behavior, or I guess the cause of it, as I heard you describing it, seem to be the reward systems and the incentives to, that generated this kind of behavior. Um, if I could flip that around a little bit, in your experience, are there uh, incentives and rewards that would generate ethical behavior? If you uh, were to take that statement uh, that you elicit the behavior you reward, are, are, there, uh, are there ways to, to more positively generate that kind of ethical response that you'd be looking for? Uh, there's a saying around, before I respond, there's a saying around Shorebank, uh, if you ever get two or more sh shore bankers together at the same time and ask the same question, the number of responses uh, will be equal to the number of people present squared. Okay, so so you might hear Mary and I disagreeing uh, quite a lot. Uh, I don't I don't know that there's any that there's a system. Okay, uh, uh, shore bank is. Uh, uh, creates uh, uh, a value system in the organization. I mean, it's been going on for a long time, and we were extremely conscious about doing that at the beginning, and you do it in all the ways that I think leaders do, okay, by setting example in, in a variety of ways, uh, by making sure that there's ethical behavior across the board, et cetera. Uh, we could ask in a moment our two colleagues here to respond. We'll see what answer they give. Uh, but. Um, uh, I think other things that we have built in, which are not directly an answer to your question, is that uh, 